hello everyone welcome to my channel and today i'm going to discuss with you some of the interesting english idioms with the name of countries that are in the world these idioms can make your english stylish and you can use it anywhere whether you are writing an ielts exam or an esl exam or toefl exam whichever exam you are writing in english you can use it in your essay or letter this will not make your writing look better rather you can speak it while convers conversing with someone so hopefully this video will help you to make your english better and improve in your speaking so let's start with the video I would request you to subscribe to my channel Competition Cracker and press the bell icon to get the latest notification updates. So let's start. The first idiom is to go Dutch. What it means is to split the bill in a restaurant between everyone who ate together. Suppose five of your friends and you means total six persons go to a restaurant and you split the bill together equally between all of you then what does it mean it means to go dutch you prefer to share the bill and not pay the bill alone so that means to go dutch see look at this usage sally said she wouldn't let a man pay for her meal on a first date she prefers to go Dutch. She means on her first date, <laughs> she wouldn't share the bill. Oh, sorry. Uh, she wouldn't let the man pay the bill alone. She would share the bill with him. So you can use it while speaking or in your writing. Let's go to the next idiom. Take French leave. Now, what does it mean? To leave work without permission. Suppose you go to office Monday to Friday and for two to three days you take permission to you take leave without permission of your boss. So what does that mean? Take French leave without telling anyone or without official permission you go on a leave. That means take French leave. Now you will see the example. I think he is taking French leave. He is not seriously ill. It means he is just making excuses. Actually, he is on the French leave. Now we will go to the next idiom. It's all Greek to me. What does it mean is when you don't understand or have no knowledge on a topic that the other person is talking about or you don't get anything that is being told to you let's see the usage i tried to watch a tv show about physics last night but i gave up it was all greek to me what he is trying to say is he was trying to watch a tv show about physics but he couldn't understand it at all when you don't understand it at all it means it's all greek to you the things are going over your head and you are not getting anything about the topic that what means is all greek to me so let's move to the next idiom pardon my french this expression is used to apologize when you used rude or impolite language when you don't use polite words that means pardon my french it means actually you are using abusive language when you abuse someone intentionally you say pardon my french like usage pardon my french but that's total bullshit like he has used here an abusive word but he has already said pardon my french that's all bullshit 
so he is making a, an effort to be pardoned for using abusive language a young turk it is used to describe a young rebel who is a part of a group or an organization and can't be controlled those persons who cannot be controlled at any cost and uncontrollable will talk about anything and would like to destroy the organization those are called young turk now usage i was a bit of a young turk in the past but i've calmed down a lot now does so this is the usage of this idiom now we'll move to the next idiom guys here it is the next idiom chinese whispers what does it mean when the information you get is only a rumor it is not an accurate information that means it is a chinese whispers example all this talk about the prime minister resigning is just chinese whispers there's no truth in the rumor so we are talking about the prime minister is resigning resigning that's a rumor so there's no truth in the rumor that's an inaccurate information that's when you use the word chinese whispers talk for england wow what a idiom this is when someone talks for hours and hours and hours he or she keeps on talking and on talking and talking and you just get fed up of that person that's where you can use talk for england example i'm so sorry i'm late i couldn't get away from linda she can talk for england it means linda can talk for hours and hours and hours that's why he got late so move to the next idiom a mexican standoff well when there are two parties suppose there are two parties and they are to reach an agre um, agreement but they don't reach a conclusion or they, they don't reach a, a mutual conclusion between them that's where this mexican standoff is used example there appears to be a mexican standoff as neither party can agree on the terms of the merger so two companies are merging but there doesn't seem to be a, an agreement on merger that's why there seems to be a mexican standoff too many sh sh chiefs and not enough indians this is often used where there are too many managers on the upper level and not enough people on the lower level of a company doing the actual work so there are too many managers on the upper level and not much workers on the lower level that's when we use this idiom too many chiefs and not enough indians example the trouble with that company is that there are too many chiefs and not enough indians it is used to describe when the company is actually having a loss due to due to less people of working at the lower level and the other people at higher level are not working at all so you can use this idiom there dutch courage actually it is used when you need a lot of courage to do something when you need a lot of confidence to do something so that's when this dutch courage is used example you can see i think i'll have a quick drink for dutch courage because before i ask that girl to dance with me so he needs to drink alcohol or to give the confidence before he can ask the girl to dance with him so that's when you use this dutch courage when in rome as a roman jew meaning when you are visiting a different country suppose you are visiting italy or suppose you are visiting london suppose you are visiting australia suppose you are visiting canada so you should behave like the people who live there 
you should um, oblige to the rules of that country otherwise you get in the problem there so that's when this idiom is used that when in rome uh, do as the romans do do as the those countrymen do behave like them so hopefully these idioms will work out to better make your english better and improve your IELTS score or improve your TOEFL score or improve your PTE score you can use these idioms in writing essays you can use these idioms while speaking to make more fluent more stylish and more beautiful English you can ever speak in an organization so best of luck for your exams or your English exams I would say best of luck to you if you like this video share it like it comment it and do subscribe to my channel competition cracker thanks for watching today